In this video, I would like to do some basic image editing. So I'm going to go up to File and Open to open up a demo image. In this particular video, I'm going to go over image rotation, uh, getting rid of some stray marks, and um, doing some basic adjustments and the benefits of using a filler adjustment layer. All right, so I have my image open, and I think we can see that the first problem is that the orientation isn't correct. So if that's something you want to change, what you can do then is come up to the word image, the third one over, come down to about the middle to image rotation, and at this point it looks like if we do 90 degrees clockwise, that might solve the problem. Well, that got us pretty close. Uh, if we take a look at this, uh, if we zoom in a little bit, you'll see that it's still at a little bit of an angle. And this is the kind of problem you might have, uh, you know, especially if you're scanning uh, something in, they almost never come in perfectly straight. So if you want to tweak that a little bit, all you need to do is go back up to image, down to image rotation again, and this time pick arbitrary. When you do that, you have the option of, first of all, picking clockwise versus counterclockwise, and then you can put in a much smaller angle instead of 90 or 180 or something like that. So, you know, I think one, that's what it has here right now, will work pretty well, and we'll do it one degrees clockwise. That should do the trick. I'll say, okay. And you'll see it straightened it out. Um, it's pretty subtle, but now we have nice 90 degree corners here instead of having it look just a little bit crooked. Now that we've gotten it nice and straight, might zoom in and see that this particular photograph has some marks on it. So there's some funny little marks up here and then some down below. Uh, this is really common. Once again, if you have scanned in a drawing, a rendering, or something like that, you will inevitably have little things that you need to fix. So using my magnifying glass, I'm going to zoom in down at the bottom so we can take a look at these little marks down at the bottom of the screen. How would you get rid of those? Well, the easiest way on a plain white piece of paper would be to use the eyedropper and a paintbrush and just paint over it. So I'm going to use control minus and zoom out just a little. And I can use my eyedropper tool right here in the toolbox. And I'll grab a sample of my white area out here. Come back and grab that paintbrush. And now I just want to make the paintbrush a little bit bigger. Something like that might work, maybe a little bigger. And then also the hardness. Right now my brush is set at zero, which means it'll be pretty soft and fuzzy, a little bit like spray paint or something like that. So I'm gonna take it up a little bit higher. I might not actually make it 100%. That can make the edges too harsh. So sometimes around 95 or something like that works pretty well. Now that I have it, I can come in and color over this a little bit. I'm noticing that um, it didn't quite cover it entirely. That's because, if I look at my paintbrush again, the opacity is down at 32. If you actually want it to cover completely, we'll take that up to 100. And now I should be able to come in here and do a better job. If you have um, you know, perfectly straight lines that you want to cover or you want to get along the edge a little bit neater, what you can do is click with your mouse and then hold down the Shift key and then you can only go in a straight line, either horizontally or vertically. Okay, So if I had you know, a little nasty edge down here that I wanted to clean up, I could click, hold the Shift key, and it would go perfectly straight across the bottom. If that's not something I wanted to do, I can do Control-Z to undo it. Okay, So using the eyedropper and a paintbrush works really well for areas that are all just one color. If I grab my zoom tool here and get a little bit closer to this particular mistake, you'll see that if I zoom in a lot, we have pixels of different colors. I'm actually going to turn off the extras feature here so you can see it a little better. So each one of these squares is a pixel of information. If I zoom out a little, 
you'll see that what can happen is if I use an eyedropper to pick a color and then paintbrush over it, you can get these very flat areas. It looks very fake and it looks like you went in with a solid color. Uh, it doesn't look very professional at all. So I'm just going to undo that, zoom in again. So what would really be better at this point would to be uh, using a different tool, such as the clone stamp tool. And that's over here under the paintbrush. And what the clone stamp tool does is it samples a different area of your image and then copies those pixels over. So to do it very dramatically, I'm going to go up to the top here and change the opacity all the way to 100. And I'll sample a completely different area so you can see what I mean. To sample an area, you simply hold down the Alt key, and then your cursor changes to a bit of a target. So I'll click, that's my sample area, and now I'll bring my mouse over here. So you can see I actually have a preview of what that's going to look like. So if I just click and draw, you'll see it's just copying that area I sampled from, which is actually pretty neat. But that's not what I want to do here. So what I'll do is hold down the Alt key, sample an area inside of here that's going to look a lot more similar and then color inside. Sometimes uh, it makes sense to sample different areas so that you don't get exact copies that can be noticeable and likewise sometimes it makes sense to take the opacity down a little bit and do a little bit more of a layering effect. So this is a really really good way to get rid of blemishes, maybe tears, smudges, things like that. All right, so I just did Control Zero there to zoom all the way out. So at this point, our uh, our photograph is looking pretty good. So it's straight, and we've gotten rid of you know blemishes and things like that. It's all all looking pretty dull though. So if we want to go in and punch up the contrast and things like that, we have a couple of different options. The traditional way to do that is to go up to the word image again. And then we see the Adjustments tab, and there's a bunch of different options here. And then we also have Auto Tone, Auto Contrast, and Auto Color. So sometimes it doesn't hurt to just go in and give these a shot, and these might work fine. You know, I might say Auto Tone, and already that's looking a lot better. I'm going to do Control Z just to undo that quickly. You'll notice what happens though is that you're actually editing this image, and it's somewhat destructive in that if I hit save and came back to it, I'm, I'm stuck with it. Unless I did a save as and had a different version of the file. There's a different way to go about this that can actually be pretty handy once you get used to it. What we're looking for are the adjustment layers. So over in our layers palette here, you'll see that we have just the background. This is the image as it opened. And then above that, I have a bunch of adjustment options. If you don't have this available to you, Go up to the very top of your screen to the word Window and click on Adjustments. So within the adjustments, if I just hold my mouse over a few of them, you'll see that we can change things like brightness and contrast, levels, curves, exposure, vibrance, hue and saturation, and so on. So to just try one of those, perhaps I'll pick the second one in, Levels. As I do that, watch the Layers palette. When I click Levels, it actually makes a new adjustment layer above my original background image, calls it Levels 1, because I could do this multiple times, they're, they're buildable. I'm just going to move this over so it clicks into place, and you'll see that I can come in. So as I make adjustments to the levels, watch what happens to the photograph. Levels is actually a little bit complicated, but a good rule of thumb when looking at an image like this is to look here at the histogram. We have a black, a gray, and a white triangle. Notice over here there's a big gap between the edge and where this hump begins. If I click on this black triangle and drag it over, that's going to be punching up the contrast in my image. So I'll take it over so you can see how it's very flat, and now it's getting you know, you can see a lot more detail, a lot more contrast. I can bring the middle one over too. That'll grab the midtones, making them lighter or darker. That's a little too dark, huh? Okay. 
And then I can do the same with the white if I wanted to make it a little brighter. This is actually a little bit washed out already, so you know I might do something like that. And that's playing with the levels. On top of that, I could add another adjustment layer. Perhaps this time I will do brightness and contrast. When I click that, this properties menu changes and it stacks a brightness and contrast adjustment layer on top of the last one I just did. So I could come in here and for example bump up the contrast very extreme to very low and the brightness as well. Finally maybe I'll come in and do something with vibrance or I think I'll choose hue and saturation. So if I click hue and saturation once again it adds a new adjustment layer to my layers menu and then you'll see that this palette has changed. So within this first thing I might do is just grab the saturation bar and move the slider over. So I'm thinking I want this image to be very, very colorful. So I can take it all the way to the left and that will totally desaturate it, or take it all the way to the right and make it very extreme. So I think I'll do maybe something like that's looking a little better. You can also change the lightness here to completely black or white. And you could actually come around and play with the colors. This will be doing all of them. If I just take the slider, I'm going to take that back to zero because it's on master. But if I felt like this image had not enough or too much of any particular color, I could actually come in at this point and tweak colors individually. For example, I could pick yellow and grab saturation and make the yellow much more saturated and so on. So you can actually come in and fix a lot of mistakes if you've done any drawings or renderings and um, they've come out too yellow, too blue or something like that. You can actually adjust them pretty easily in here. What's nice about using the adjustment layers is that if you look over at the palette here, on the left side of each layer there's an eyeball. If you click on any one of these you can turn the layers on and off. I can even turn off the original image so that I could choose to keep or discard any of them and you can use them individually. So see that once I have them all on the image is actually looking pretty good. Okay. Once you get an image that you're happy with, that you're feeling pretty good about, what we'll want to do is save it in two different versions. Right now if I look up at the name on the tab I see that this is a JPEG. It's an image I grabbed off the internet and it's a JPEG. If I were to just uh, save it now as it is, I wouldn't be able to save the layers because JPEGs don't like to do that. So I'll do a file and a save as and I will save this as the top choice here, the Photoshop PSD. That's Photoshop's native file format and it's definitely the best way to go. So perhaps I will come in and change the name here to my image and name it something like layers. That'll make sense to me later. And then I'll hit save and OK. So I know that I always have this to come back to if I want to make some edits. But if this is something I think I'm pretty happy with and I know I want to put it on my website or whatever it might be, I can go in and flatten it before I get out of the program. And to do that, I just come over to the Layers palette, come to this upper right-hand corner menu, and I'll say Flatten Image. And that took all of those adjustment layers and squashed them down so I just have a singular picture again. Then I could do a file, a Save As, and I could save it as some other file type that might work better for me. Uh, you know, if I wanted to send this to someone who didn't have Photoshop or Adobe software, I might do a JPEG or a TIFF or something like that. So I could do a JPEG. And then this one, instead of calling it layers, which wouldn't make sense because it doesn't have layers anymore, I'll name it flat. And then here we have the option of picking different file sizes. That's something I'll go over in another video. So for now, I'll just keep the quality high say OK. And now I have greatly improved my image.